OK. All right, good morning, colleagues. Uh, it being uh, today, the 21st of uh, May. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, nice to see everybody looking so bright and sharp. We're here for a couple of hours this morning again to continue the budget, which has been uh, going pretty much according to schedule. Um, mm -hmm. Today, we're going to be looking at uh, um, capital. So before I go to make sure all of our councillors are here, um, I want to acknowledge one thing that Councillor Hensby brought to my attention last night, which is that 40 years ago yesterday, they, Terry Fox was in Halifax on his Marathon of Hope. I'm sure that even Lindell will have heard about uh, Terry Fox uh, before his time as it was. Uh, but on that day, May the 20th, 1980, he met with the mayor of Halifax and the mayor of Dartmouth. I assume that would be Danny Brownlow in Dartmouth and Ron Wallace, I'm guessing, in uh, Halifax. Um, so Councillor Hensby and I had a brief chat last night. Terry Fox was a hero to me. He really was. He was he was my vote on the greatest Canadian, maybe because he was my generation. But, you know, I think um, what, what uh, that young man uh, did still provides inspiration to me to this day, the great courage that he had and everything else. And uh, I think it's worth acknowledging 40 years ago, it's hard to believe, David, that it was 40 years ago, Terry Fox was here. And uh, of course he died, uh, finished his run in, I think it was June or July, he, he got up to close to Thunder Bay. Anyway, uh, to me it was a big deal. And uh, I think it's worth acknowledging that he was here, meeting with the mayors of Halifax and uh, Dartmouth and that was before the run really took on as much momentum as it later did anyway it was a big deal I remember hearing on the radio that he was in town um, yeah. on CFDR working at Maplehurst properties uh, for the Zaspin family uh, okay to St. Mary's and my dad told me about seeing him go by the house on number seven highway through Westfall and uh, yeah it was a remarkable man uh, too bad he couldn't live on to be even a greater Canadian than he is already a hero but I think he would have been a great uh, Governor, General Governor for, for all of us. Yeah. Terry Fox, one of the greats um, in Halifax and Dartmouth 40 years ago yesterday. OK, guys, uh, Council for Stretch, are you uh, with us this morning? Uh, yes, Your Worship, I'm here and uh, happy to uh, see all your bright and smiley faces again today. Councillor Hensby, I see you. President McCallum for Councillor Carson, are you with us this morning? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'm here and I'm surprised you didn't uh, suggest that I possibly wasn't here for Terry Fox either, but uh, much like Lindell, us young fellows uh, don't know too much about that. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> well, I assumed that you were retired at that time. <laughs> paying full attention. Councillor Nickel. Councillor Nickel, you on mute? Yep. Turn it off. She's got the it won't come off mute frustrated look. We see you. <laughs> There's Councilor. lots of hand gestures there, but I'm not sure which one's going to come up next. Uh, <laughs> Councilor, Councilor Austin. I'm here and uh, mute button showed up OK on this end so far. Councilor Mancini. I'm here, Mr. Mayor. Good morning, everyone. Councilor Mason. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. I want to point out that early morning meetings are kinder to Councillor Stretch's uh, rural internet connection. All the young people aren't streaming videos and games yet, so he's coming <laughs> in crystal clear today. Good morning to everybody. Councillor Smith. Good morning. Happy to be here. Councillor Cleary. Uh, good morning, Your Worship. Uh, it's <laughs> funny you mentioned Terry Fox. Uh, when I was in elementary school in Brampton, Ontario, uh, in the Peel district, they started, uh, I think it was the first Terry Fox school after he passed away. Oh. And I was scheduled to go to it. And unfortunately, I ended up going to B.D. Fleming because we moved. Uh, but I, I literally cried uh, the day I found out I wasn't going to the Terry Fox school. Awesome. Councillor Walker. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Adams. Oh, man. Yeah. Hi there. I'm uh, here. I thought my mute wouldn't come off, so there we go. Anyway, good morning, everybody. Be very careful what you say if you think your mute is off. Very careful, young man. 
<laughs> Councillor Zorowski. Good morning, all. Good morning, Your Worship, from District 12 in the Grotto. Um, you got a haircut, Richard? <laughs> no, I, I just decided to comb it for once. Oh. It's it's Thursday. Thursday, he washed it. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Whitman. Good morning, Mayor Savage and colleagues. Hello to residents. Good morning. You got a haircut. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> good. Deputy Mayor. Hey, good morning, everybody. Want to wish my parents a very, very happy 54th wedding anniversary. Today. That's right. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Councillor Russell. Good morning, everyone from uh, Sunny Sackville. It uh, should be a nice day today, and apparently that's going to change for next week. But today is good. Councillor Outhead. Hello. Good morning to everybody. Happy to hear that Cleary did go to school. That's good. And uh, <laughs> hi from uh, hi from Sunny District 16. All right. And uh, I'm here. Jacques and Jane are both here, I assume. Here with uh, lights on, Mr. Mayor. Okay. As well, Mr. As well, Mr. Mayor. Thank you to both of you. So today, uh, colleagues, we will uh, uh, continue with the budget uh, recast from COVID-19 impacts. Continuing our discussion today, we're going to be looking at uh, capital. Laura, you sent out uh, uh, refresh, so the, the the copy that was originally sent out to councillors, dated May the first. That's been used for our discussions. Attachment C is the capital list. Um, we'll go to uh, Jacques, maybe you or Jane. I'll give it to you. You can uh, lead us off and then we'll uh, have discussion. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor uh, and members of Regional Council. Good morning. I certainly want to take a few minutes to talk about uh, the process and purpose that led to the current recommendations on, on the capital budget that's before you. So we revisited the capital budget with two objectives in mind. One was to reduce the budget pressure. And the second being to assist with minimizing cash flow this fiscal year, given the cash crunch we are facing. So the capital budget team looked at all projects and were, that were being funded with capital from operating and looked to see which ones would be eligible for other funding sources. And that exercise actually resulted in a reduction of 25 million in capital from operating, as you know, having gone through the uh, the uh, business unit presentations and conversations we've had over the last week or so. We also looked at projects whose budget could be reduced. And we also have many carryover projects on the books and projects that cannot proceed this year due to supply chain issues due to COVID-19, staff availability, timing and capacity to, to deliver. So those adjustments all in resulted in a capital budget reduction of over $100 million. I also want to point out to you that le this leaves a capital plan of $208 million for 2021. And to be frank, there is no way we can deliver a program like that this year. The average plan we have delivered over the last three years is in the range of $165 million. So what's there before you went $208 million is significantly above that number. So when you factor in the carryover projects plus new projects in 2021, the capital plan was $316 million, almost twice the average amount that we deliver annually, and that does not include funding for a number of strategic important priorities strategic initiatives Regional Council wants to advance, such as bus rapid transit and Bedford Highway Corridor Plan, which are both coming to Regional Council uh, very soon for approval. So we also considered uh, taking a capital holiday for a year, uh, but even doing that would not clear the $108 million backlog that we have in capital right now. So I just wanted to lay all that out for you, Mr. Mayor and members of Regional Council uh, to give you the context of uh, where how we got to where we are and, and the recommendation you know, they put before you. I do want to thank Jane Fraser and all the directors, Crystal Mellon and our asset, ma asset management office and all of her team and all the project managers across all business units for their excellent work on helping me recommend a revised capital plan for your consideration. 
So finally, we, we uh, need regional council's endorsement of our shovel ready projects. So as, as was mentioned to you before, prior conversations over the last month, uh, the province had asked us for shovel ready projects. So we submitted a list of shovel ready projects. They, they add up to something in excess of $70 million that we submitted on the basis that we would, uh, those are the ones that we could actually do this year uh, and we would seek funding from, for which we would see funding from the province and federal government. So as you know, the, pro the, the shovel ready projects don't match up to the total capital recommendation we're proposing, but these are the projects that we would feel fit within the criteria of the federal provincial agreements on infrastructure. So we want to, we need council's endorsement of those shovel ready projects submitted to the province so that when they come back to us to say the council did uh, endorse these projects, so we can say yes. Uh, so time is of the essence, because we think there's some fairly intense conversations going on between the province and the federal government at the moment and we will seek your adoption of an appropriate motion either today if we have time tomorrow or tuesday depending on where we are with the discussions today and, and tomorrow on the capital budget so with that mr mayor i would like to refer you and all members of regional council to the attachment c of the cao report on on the proposed budget adjustments and the team is at the ready to answer your questions so thank you very much mr mayor over to you Thank you, Jean. Just a uh, clarification: the, the the list of shovel-ready projects of seventy million. That's seventy million. Is that seventy million? That's that's the cost, the total cost that we would hope to get cost shared. That's not our cost of. That's not our share. That's the cost that we're hoping to get that's shared. Net, yeah, that's the that's the total cost of all the projects that we submitted that are shovel-ready that we feel can be supported by the province and the federal government. So, for example, assuming assuming that there's a third, a third, a third, we're looking at somewhere. 23 or $4 million uh, from each level of government against that, which would bring in you know, arguably 40, 40 to $45 million uh, of cash uh, that we could then uh, uh, reassign or reapply to other purposes if council so wished. So we're trying to free up some capacity uh, and minimize some of our cash flow. And I'm we may well get other projects, we may get other uh, other supports from the federal or provincial governments, we don't know, but those that's those are the, those are the projects that we've been asked to submit by the province for consideration at both levels of government now, because uh, they are shovel ready and uh, they fit criteria within existing programs. Any future programs, we may be back to council uh, for further endorsement or further approvals of submissions. And Jacques, I'm getting a couple of questions from councillors. Where is that list available? It will be circulated to council either today uh, or tomorrow. It hasn't been circulated to you yet. We're just we're just finalizing a a motion, so it'll be it'll be part of a very short, sharp um, recommendation report that says here's the list, and um, we're asking your recommend your your endorsement of the list. Okay. Okay, so it'll be circulated. It's all, it's all embedded. I mean, it's all all the projects are actually embedded within the attachment C of your report, but it will be pulled. These shovel ready ones will be pulled out and, and provided to you separately so you can see all of them that, that we need uh, your endorsement. All right. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going forward. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Um, we'll begin the anything that's good. The Jane, you're good. Yes, I am, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Yeah. I know you're good. You're really good. Um, OK, Councillor, we'll begin with Councillor uh, Adams. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, and, and as a, yesterday, uh, we had touched on the uh, the two issues around fire, and I put that in my note that I'd like to speak regarding fire uh, with regard to Station 50, 56, uh, 60, 11, uh, the eastern shore of the Sheet Harbor area, and also the honorarium for firefighters, which is in the ballpark of 1.7 to 1.8 million dollars. And I just have a question with regard to um, in attachment C, project number CB000052, which is Fire Station 2 University Avenue recap. From the outset, I want to make it perfectly clear that this is not, and my, my questions aren't looking to compromise one community to bolster another or pit community against community. That's not my intent and I want to make that perfectly clear. Um, however, I do have a question for the chief with regard to this funding. Um, how much is uh, has been used? Um, what is the condition of the building right now as we speak? And I know 
capital to operating is not something over which accountants are thrilled about, but I'm not thrilled about the COVID uh, as well. And uh, I think we have to do some things that may or may not be generally accepted, uh, but still perfectly legal. So just a, a question to the chief, uh, what's the status of the project? Um, is there any monies that, that might become available that or could be deferred for a year out, but still maintain the safety and integrity of that station? Thank you for the question, Councillor, through the chair to answer your question. Uh, so station two is actually uh, a long-standing recap project that we've been working on for some time. Uh, the good news is the significant amount of work to the exterior of the building, which would include the roof uh, that had some leaks and some exterior exterior cladding is done, as well as some emergency exit staircases and uh, some significant renovations inside. For the most part, the bulk of that work is done. This uh, bit that remains in the capital budget was to finish the repairs entirely and that's mostly renovations to the second floor. Uh, I believe there's still uh, 1.7 million dollars in the capital projects uh, account to finish that work. I believe there's probably about a hundred or so thousand of that spoken for, uh, but one of the things that we had heard from our association, our union, was that their members, each uh, one of the officers for platoon station there, had actually said they'd be willing to continue to live in that um, kind of renovation state for another year or two if we pushed that project out uh, and, uh, and continue to work in that space as we have for uh, a long, long period of time. So I hope that answers your questions. Uh, Jerry could probably uh, give the finite details of where we are actually uh, with that $100,000 or $150,000. But certainly our perspective is if that was a decision um, supported by uh, Jacques and, uh, and the CFO and council that uh, that work could be pushed out a year or two. It's already been going on for many, many years. Okay, thank, thank you for that, Chief. So. The, the station right now, as it sits, is safe and it's functional. The, the, the firefighters there are comfortable with pushing it out a bit, which is good news. Um, I'm just going to revert back to Councillor Mason's motion, which was all encompassing and would allow many different ways to, to reach the, uh, the goals that we were, we were looking to uh, achieve, and that being um, you know, personnel. Um, and it also called upon not only uh, reserves, but other sources. If we're able to do this, and I think motion of council will be the thing, but that can come back. Um, this would not dip into our reserves. This would uh, use existing monies again, capital to operating, but uh, the reserves could be used for something else or maybe even kept in reserve. So uh, thank you for your answers. I'm, I'm very comfortable. I would hope that other members of council are comfortable as well, that the, the station is fine the way it is and can uh, go out a, maybe a, a, a week or, or a week, a year or so um uh, when things get uh, i won't say better but a little less worse thank you okay thank you uh councillor austin i think i jinxed myself earlier there mr mayor and uh referencing the mute button coming on and being available um so I, I've got uh, uh, three different things I want to look at this morning. Um, two of them are reductions, and then the other one is uh, in addition to the budget that I'd like to put into the options list. And uh, the one I want to add is, of course, the downtown Dartmouth infrastructure project. It's $2 million. Um, we had the discussion previously when we were looking at the budget options list about adding this in and uh, thank you college you supported it at that time and then it's been cut again in the recast budget and what this is is it's two million dollars for land acquisition so maybe we spend that all of that maybe we don't um land acquisition being not an exact science and a little bit subject to wi willing buyer willing seller um 
The project is significant for downtown Dartmouth. I referenced it as Dartmouth's Cogswell. Um, it's not on the same scale, but we're basically taking our 1960s, 1970s, uh, outdated, outmodeled road infrastructure, in this case, Alderney Drive. We're slimming that down. We're adding pedestrian and cycling on it and a multi-use trail. Uh, we're enabling redevelopment in Dartmouth Cove, so there's a property economic piece to it. And of course, we're creating new public spaces in the Sawmill River and public park space, which um, you know, judging from phase one um, it has been quite a hit in downtown Dartmouth. And, you know, it is just the land acquisition, but the thing about land acquisition is it never seems important until suddenly you're trying to do your project and guess what, you can't, which is basically where we are with Cogswell right now. Um, it's deferred, but the reason we really can't do it is because we don't have the land. And so if we don't prioritize buying the property in downtown Dartmouth, we will not be shovel ready potentially when we need to. And there's a couple implications from that. The main one being uh, Halifax Water is still, they're still on track with their capital plan to do the daylighting. And they need us to buy the land and build our portion, the Dundas Street Bridge, um, to enable theirs. Because otherwise we have no way to reroute traffic during construction. And the, the piece that is particularly time sensitive on the acquisition side, on the Dundas Street, the extension of Dundas to the new bridge, is I have a private developer in Dartmouth Cove that wants to build two towers. This is derelict industrial land that serves no, no real value to us as it is now. And he wants to build two residential towers on his property. He's been working on this since uh, I believe it was 2012, it might've been 2014. And it's been hurry up and wait forever from HRM because of all the complexity around getting our planning in order and also figuring out how to do uh, the redevelopment in Dartmouth Cove in terms of the infrastructure. And we've actually zoned a chunk of his property as transportation reserve. So it's not expropriated, but we've literally zoned a chunk of his land as this is going to be a road and you can't use it. And uh, he's got nothing for that yet. And so it doesn't make any sense to me to hold off on actually completing what we've said we're going to do, that we're gonna buy this chunk of property um, because we're, 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 we're at that point, we're ready to go and there's significant risk in not. And uh, really we're not gonna spend $2 million and continue to say, hold up and wait on adding $65 million worth of assessment into downtown Dartmouth. That's from, the developers pro forma, what they're estimating his project is worth when it's built, 65 million bucks. And so to say, hurry up and wait on this, just, I mean, it's penny wise pound foolish. So I would ask that we add this to the budget for this year so that we can carry on with the land acquisition and hopefully be in a position to actually cost share this with the other levels of government. Um, because if we're not ready to go, well, then we, there's no cost sharing to happen. So Councilor Austin, that's the downtown Dartmouth infrastructure renewal. It's about 40% down the page on page three. Yes. DC 190003, correct? Yes. And you're proposing that we put that back on the, uh, be considered for the list. So are we just keeping a, another a parking lot list, uh, Jane? Yes, Mr. Mayor, that's what we'll be doing. Okay. I'll second that uh, for and Councilor Austin, Councilor Cleary here. So, is there a discussion on that? I'll certainly, I'm familiar with the project and I do think that the developer in question has been looking at this for many, many years and has been really been waiting for the city on a lot of those cases, Sam, uh, Councillor Austin, and uh, it's a large amount of money that's contingent on that. So, from my point of view, um, I get that. It's a lot of money, but it probably needs to be spent. Any other discussion on that? A quick question from uh, Tim, Mike. I'm just sure. wondering if Jacques, uh, just wondering if Jacques or uh, Jane could indicate if that's something that could be on the list that's going to be coming forward today or tomorrow on. Uh, so, is the two million our cost, or is there, or is there a chance of getting uh, some partners on that two million if it's a several ready project? That's a good question. Uh, Jacques or Jane, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I'll <clears throat> I'll try to answer it. I don't believe it's a shovel ready project. It's not something that will proceed this year as far as I know, as far as the actual work as Councillor 
Uh, Austin has said it's about acquisition of land and the project will unfold as over the coming year or years. Uh, and uh, so it's probably not something that we'll put in the shovel ready list. Could possibly be a, a project depending on the on the actual work that needs to be done. We'd have to take a look at it, uh, see whether it fit any criteria of any programs in the future. But uh, uh, we'll certainly take a look at that and uh, come back to council with advice if it does fit uh, any programs. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Russell on the motion. Uh, my mute button is acting up today. I apologize for that. Um, so the staff had recommended that this is not included and we are at this point looking to uh, eliminate, uh, to reduce, to cut as many costs as we can because we have absolutely no idea what our income is going to be. And all indications are uh, that it is going to be nowhere near uh, what we had had in the past. And so I'm simply looking to uh, see if uh, we can get some background from staff on why this project was included in the list of uh, of reductions is it simply going to be deferred or is it going to be cut i would expect that it's going to be deferred um, but i would like to hear staff's justification on uh, why this is included in the list Anybody got uh, perhaps, yeah perhaps peter duncan or kelly denty could weigh in on this one Would like me to speak? Yeah, Kelly. Okay. Uh, I think uh, Councillor Austin did a good job of describing it. It's it's simply a case of uh, again looking to find money to move uh, out. Um, it uh, it is land acquisition. Certainly, we could if we had the money available, we could do the land acquisition now. Uh, but again, it wasn't considered essential. We were still gathering some bits and pieces together. Um, so it was simply a project that was a little bit premature, uh, understanding that I think Halifax Water was looking for funding from uh, IPIC to do their work as well, and uh, we weren't quite sure of the status of that. So this one looked like it could have we could have bought some time by moving it out a little bit. Peter can potentially provide a little bit more detail if, if that's helpful to the conversation. Yes, thank you. Peter, are you there? Oh uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, Peter Duncan, Manager of Infrastructure Planning, through you, Mr. Mayor. No, that's about all the detail that I would have, that I was going to pro provide. Maybe just to restate that the two million dollars that was in the budget, or that was proposed to be in the budget for 2020, was for purchasing was for purchasing land, uh, so that we could move towards making this a shovel a shovel ready uh, project. Okay, thank you very much. I am uh, not going to be able to support this project. And, and the reason uh, for that is because of the criteria that I had listed at the beginning, um, where uh, all of the decisions that I'll be making look at uh, health and safety, uh, food security and shelter first, and then look at the economics of it. And from what I'm seeing, the economics of this do not cause, even, even though there is a shelter component to it, uh, it, it does not fit that immediacy of requiring the funding at this time. And, and so I'm not going to be able to support this project, but thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, just looking at the list, um, uh, Councillor Mason on this. Uh. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I have, I am going to support the motion and the reason why is not uh, simply the heartfelt pleas of uh, my uh, fellow downtown councillor uh, from across the harbour, but it's because the uh, property owner that uh, Councillor Austin described, you know, first met with me to talk about the potential of building these properties and started showing very well advanced drawings for, for uh, his, the Dartmouth Cove proposal six years ago, seven years ago, and the main holdup on this 
is us. It's Halifax, Halifax Water, and 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 the right of way. It's it's building the access to uh, Dartmouth Cove. It's uh, solving uh, relaying the street grid, which is part of the Dartmouth Cove redevelopment. Uh, it's the fact that the uh, uh, proposed uh, ground floor would be two meters higher than the existing roadbed. So you've got to try and figure out a way that these new folks are going to be building uh, that property like that. And then it drops back down to the current level when you get to the curling club, uh, just inland of it. Uh, and uh, so so, so to me, uh, yeah, it's, it may not be shovel ready immediately, but what we have is uh, a good faith purchase by a developer who's been told any day now we're going to get to this. And, and I would hate to see this uh, further delayed. I think it's something we need to expedite and, and get going. I don't think it's fair to keep that sitting there. Acknowledging there's lots of issues to work out with Develop Nova Scotia and the developer and the entire detail plan for Dartmouth Cove. I'm not saying it's simple, but this is a key piece. Uh, the other thing that I want to say is that in the short time that I've been here, uh, I, you know, generally property doesn't get cheaper over time. That's the other piece. If it's available for sale right now, that's what I just heard Kelly Denti say. Uh, we could buy it right now. Uh, my experience has been that we have been uh, penny wise and pound foolish at other times where we have delayed a purchase. And then when we've gone back to finally act on it, we've had to pay for it. So uh, I will support the motion. I think it's the right thing uh, to do to move that plan forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilor Mason. And I can tell you from me, it was at least eight years ago I had my first meeting on this before I was uh, the mayor of uh, HRM. Um, so I'm not sure if anybody else wants to speak on uh, this. I can go back to Councillor Austin in a second, but I have Councillor Cleary and Councillor Nickel, but I don't think they're on this topic. No, not on this one, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Councillor Nickel, you're on something else? Yes, it's on the main budget. But I am supportive of adding this to the parking lot. Okay, Councillor um, Councillor Austin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, colleagues. Um, this is, uh, you know, there is risk in this one too of not um, proceeding in terms of getting it shovel ready because, I mean, in the timeline that we'd originally sketched out, um, you need to buy the land the, for this year, and then you need to be building the, the detour next year, and then that potentially tees up Halifax Water the following year. And uh, Halifax Water, there is some flexibility on their timeline, but it is limited. Um, we have a pipe underneath the street in downtown Dartmouth that, is, that dates back to 1971 when Hurricane, after Hurricane Beth came through, and uh, it's, it's corroding, it's old. Uh, it will not wait forever. So, I mean, eventually this will go from, well, we can put this off, we can put this off to suddenly we really can't. And uh, from an economic development point of view, I mean, this is really about building the city that we want coming out of all of this. Um, this is about recovery and it's about advancing this to being shovel ready. I mean, we received um, very generous federal support on the first phase of the Sawmill River project, and that ended. Up, that was a big scramble to, to get that done, to actually get that money. Um, unless we actually move this to shovel ready, we will not be able to tap into opportunities to cost share. So uh, I really hope that we will find a way to add this to the budget. Um, this is for the parking lot, so it'll still need to be finalized in the end. So thank you, colleagues. Okay, let's roll. Uh, do the roll, uh, sure. Councillor Stretch. Against the motion. Councillor Hensby. Affirmative. Councillor Kirsten. Reluctantly for the motion. Councillor Nickel. Yes. Councillor Austin. In favor. Councillor Mancini. Councillor Mancini. Councillor Mason. Uh, I, Councillor Mancini was just giving the thumbs up. Perhaps he could uh, reply by text as well. Uh, I am for the motion. Councillor Smith. For the motion. Councillor Cleary. Yes. Councillor Walker. Against. Councillor Adams. 
For. Councillor Zorowski. I'm for the motion. I'm for muzzling Councillor Mancini as well. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Whitman. I, I'm for. Deputy Mayor Blackburn. Voting yes on the motion. Councillor Russell. Against the motion. Councillor Outhead. Yes. And Mayor Savage. Yes. Mayor Savage, is my vote counted? Yes. Councillor Mancini's for the motion. We saw the thumbs up. Yep. What was the vote? 15 to 2. It's 15 to 2 in favor of the motion and 17 to 0 in favor of muzzling Councillor Mancini. Uh, so thank you. Uh, thank you all. Uh, Madam Clerk, there was three opposed. Stretch, Walker, and Russell were opposed. Councillor Walker, can you confirm that? Against. Okay. Thank you. Thank so you. Three opposed. Thank you. So, Councillor Austin, you mentioned you had other things. We'll come back to you uh, on the list. Uh, um, committee of the whole. Um, I have Councillor Cleary, Mason, and Nickel on the list right now. We'll go to Councillor Cleary. Thank you, uh, your worship. Um, so I just I have a bunch, so hopefully I can get through them all at once. But uh, for fire, uh, it was page two, uh, HRFE intelligent dispatching, 665,000 uh, and a reduction of 665,000. So uh, perhaps the chief could let us know what is intelligent dispatching? Why is it uh, being uh, canceled? And what impact would that have on things like response time, efficiency, uh, and and you know we're putting uh, the public safety at risk by not doing this now. Councillor Cleary, how far down the page is that? In page two, uh, it would be just under halfway, or just uh, below halfway. Uh, you'll and see there's a bunch of HRFEs. Uh, HRFE intelligent dispatching. Thank you, Chief. Chief Steubing, are you with us? Sorry about that, uh, Mr. Mayor had some uh, technology problems here. Could you repeat the question? Uh, sure, it's the um, HRFE intelligent dispatching, 665,000 that's being reduced by the same amount this year. Uh, so what is that? Um, what impact will that have on your operations, especially around uh, uh, dispatch uh, call times efficiency. So through you, Mr. Mayor, to the councillor, thank you for the question. Uh, good question. Certainly, you know, we've been trying to provide better data and uh, using technology to better ascertain where our units are, not only for reporting after the fact, but for decision making up front. Uh, this is a, a complicated project which requires AVL technology, automatic vehicle locator technology in all of our trucks, as well as an interface between the CAD and those trucks and training the, uh, the dispatch staff to be able to do work differently and work coordinated between our unit, ICT, police and IES. Um, I would really love this project to go ahead. The chances of it getting done this year are probably uh, not as good as I would have liked uh, originally because we're involved in updating our AVL technology corporately. So we still certainly have a desire to move forward on this and we'll continue to work on some of the components, but just not the last major change to the CAD because there's a lot of things with a lot of parties that need to be part of that solution. So at this point, Chief, would it be fair to say you're 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 not doing this uh, right now because it's not the the money, but just that logistically you're not ready to start doing it. I think I think that's a, a pretty fair assumption. Certainly, there's a desire to get there, uh, but I just don't think it's reasonable to be able to get there based on all the hurdles we need to get over. Okay, well, thank you for that. I, I hope to then to see this in the, in the budget for next year because I think this kind of uh, uh, 
uh, data collection and, and um, information uh, assistance will be extremely important in your decision making and in reporting that then obviously back to council. So thank you for that. The, the second one I have, uh, Mr. Mayor, is the Scotiabank Center. So this is also second page about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down from the top. And it is um, uh, 908,000 carryover and a million dollars new this uh, year for 1.9 million. Um, can someone explain what that is? I, I did see some material on the roof of the uh, Scotiabank Center when I was walking my dog around Citadel Hill uh, the other day. So I'm not sure if this is something that's already in flight, if this is absolutely necessary repairs, or if it's something that we could put off given that Scotiabank Center is not probably going to be used for at least a number of months, if not the next year or more. Um, is this a, a potential savings? I see uh, Mr. McPherson uh, on my screen here now. Maybe uh, John can give me an answer. Sure. Uh, Ms. Uh, John McPherson, Manager of Corporate Facility Design and Construction. Mr. Mayor, through you to the councillor, uh, th that project uh, account is um, comprised of state of good repair projects and health and safety uh, improvements. So um, repairs to the exterior, uh, improvements to the ammonia refrigerant plant for health and safety. And as well, we have some obligations for um, under our contract with 1800 Argyle to to maintain um, common shared systems. OK, I appreciate that, John. And if I have time, uh, your worship, I guess one thing I'd like to bring to folks attention, it's the district capital again, page two, almost down at the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six up from the bottom. And it's a $750,000 deferral, a cash flow deferral. Um, and I, I think I know what that means. It's we're, we're keeping the money in the budget. We're just not going to spend it this year. We'll, we'll bring it to next year. But my conversations and my experience so far with working with uh, nonprofit groups in the area is this is going to be a bit of a lost year for many of them. So I'm wondering, does it not make sense to not defer it, but just to reduce it for this year? So reduce the district capital funds uh, by 750000 uh, so if, if uh, maybe Jane could or someone could answer that question about deferral versus reduction, am I correct in my assumption? And um, if so, I, I would like to put a motion on the floor to reduce that rather than defer it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you to the councillor. So the district capital funds, there was some carryover in there, so that was the reason why it was being looked at to be um, to be uh, deferred. Uh, certainly we could uh, reduce the budget if that was the will of council, which essentially then would take the money out um, and it would be gone as opposed to a deferral. Okay, thank you. So my assumption was correct. So then I am going to put on the floor a motion to not defer, but reduce capital district funding by 750. So that would be um, half of what we would normally have in any given year. Seconded Whitman. Okay. All right. So the motion is not to defer the district capital, but to reduce it by three quarters of a million dollars for this year. Correct, Councillor Clay? That is correct. And I think, again, it's one of those things that just shows um, uh, good cash management on our side, recognizing A, the reality out there that many of the groups that we would normally give this money to are, are kind of on hiatus at the moment. They can't really get together and do the things they would normally do. And also uh, to, as uh, Councillor Russell keeps mentioning, um, you know, this is our opportunity to look at where we can save some money. Uh, as you pointed out, Mr. Mayor, it is a rainy day. Uh, so any funds that we could push over to other things where they're absolutely required is uh, essential right now. Okay. Councillor Walker, that, um, I'm not sure if that's you, but it's, uh, I think, uh, six up from the bottom of page two. Um, is there a discussion on that uh, motion of Councillor Cleary? Ready for the question? Um, uh, I'd like to I chime in. Just okay. Uh, just a second now. So, on the motion, uh, Councillor Austin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you, Councillor Cleary. This, I circled this on my list too, as one that I think is 
worthwhile us taking a little a, a little reduction in for this year when we're cutting all sorts of our uh, more formal programs, uh, community grants and such, and our, our various granting programs and our capital budget is on under pressure um, and a lot of nonprofits. I mean, this is not going to be a big year for doing capital projects. I think it may it only makes sense for us to take a reduction uh, in this budget for this year. So uh, I'm supportive of Councillor Cleary's motion. Um, uh, although, uh, <laughs> you know, although it's, uh, it probably means no participatory budgeting in District 5 this coming year, but uh, it's not like we can gather a crowd anyway. Uh, thank you. Councillor Adams on the motion. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And I, I didn't catch everything. I did catch the uh, the $750,000 reduction. Um, given that it's an election year, um, I can assure everybody I'm not going to use any of that to, uh, you know, curry favor to buy votes. Um, but we also have uh, an additional 40% reduction up until a certain point because of the election. So uh, as opposed to looking at a $750,000 cut, what does this mean that is available per council member? So given the $750,000 um, uh, proposed by uh, Sean, and the other 40% that has to come out, uh, what would our $96,000 regular capital budget look like? Is that a, Jane, are you there? Can you speak to that or? Yeah, uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so the, um, the capital budget, so if it was a 40% reduction on spending, uh, and you'll have to forgive me, I'm not 100% sure. I know there's um, a stop at when you can, uh, when councillors can spend in an election year. I'm not sure if there's an actual reduction on that. So um, if it's 100, and, if it's 96 mm -hmm. times four, so it would equal uh, about 17,000 per councillor, assuming it's 40, Six, sorry, fifty-eight. It would be twenty-seven thousand per councillor, so it would be almost a million dollars. That's the forty percent reduction um, on that, and then if you take it in in half. Councillor Adams, you might be on mute. Just waiting for the final. Just waiting for the final tally there. So it's 96 less 90, 27. 90, 902 minus 750, which would equal $152,000 in total. Uh, so that's the 1.5 million less 40% less 750,000 leaves $152,000 left in the budget. There is also carry forward in that account of almost $600,000 that has not been spent. So that's the money from 1920. Um, the carry forward is allocated by district. So some councillors may have more in the carry forward pot than other councillors. So it's not a complete allocation that way. So <clears throat> what's the, what would be the balance per council member for this upcoming budget year available to spend? Mr. Mayor, it's uh, Councillor Clear. I, I think maybe uh, with the supplementary report, because this is going into the parking lot, we might get okay. more detailed information coming back to us when this all comes back. Okay, that's rather cool. than thank put you. Jane on the spot like that. Uh, okay. Thank you. And I can include the carryover amount by district uh, in that supplementary report for you as well, councillors. Yeah. I'll do some gazintas too. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hensby. I'll tell you what, Mr. Mayor, I cannot support this motion because right now we got community groups out there looking, waiting to see what our grant application program is going to be from the general community uh, community grants program. We don't know if that's going to be cut back or whatever. We're waiting to sign, see what those results are. I got community groups now that can't even do any fundraising right now, so they're more dependent upon any capital assistance right now than ever before. And I'm not blessed to have any surplus accounts anyway. I, I, I drain out my account year after year after year because the demand I have in my fifth district. I even have to put a cap of $10,000 per group or per project because there's so many to be done out there in the rural area. So I cannot support this uh, motion as it presently stands, as well as as Councillor Adams is getting to with the uh, election period on there as well. We're, we're losing at least uh, 
path to seven twelfths of, of the amount anyway being reserved for after election. So that's even limit the capacity for anybody to get anything done this summer for for the uh, community groups. Uh, I just cannot support this at the present time. Uh, so I'll be voting no. Thank you, Councillor Russell. Thank you. Um, Reluctantly, I'm going to be supporting this. Uh, Councillor Cleary is right. It, it does not fit within the uh, the benchmark that I had set about health and safety, uh, food security, and shelter. And and so I will be supporting this. I do recognize that uh, community groups are looking for uh, some funding and are looking for some help. But at this point, we do have to um, make sure that we have enough money available to serve all of those programs that are absolutely required. And uh, and so I will be uh, I will be supporting this motion. Thank you. Councilor Walker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, after the meeting I had last night, um, things may open up more quickly than we even think. So uh, I think we should be very careful on how this because many of the community grants are not going to happen and other grants from uh, HRM. So uh, there's only, I know there's only one taxpayer, there's only one pot of money too, and if we uh, eliminate this, and uh, it's not going to be there to be given out in uh, dire times. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mason. Having trouble with the mute, I think, there. There you go. Almost. One sec. I can see it at least. There. Did it work? Can you hear me now? We're good, yep. Yeah, so it's for the IT guys, you know, I'm now nervously checking to make sure that the, the bar comes up and that I can mouse over the mute in between sessions. But as soon as the it goes live and comes to you, it freezes up. So I don't know what's going on there. It's too bad Zoom is uh, insecure because that actually works. Anyway, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, for that. I do support the motion. Uh, I, I feel, you know, obviously uh, there are going to be projects and groups that I'm going to want to fund, and and uh, the uh, the uh, we'll still have half our funding, and and I believe that they can make do with that. Uh, I, I think the core community grant funding, which is coming back in the report, is uh, more critical to to really having a hard look at that and understanding what the impacts are of withdrawing that kind of annual operational funding, respecting that those groups aren't going to be able to deliver normal uh, uh, services and programs. They're still going to have insurance and rent and, uh, you know, in some cases, staff that, that need to be paid during the interim. And a lot of them are being creative and looking at doing other things. So uh, I think that the, the, if I had a choice, if it was one or the other. Yeah, I'd, uh, I, I will support uh, the staff report on this uh, to cut this uh, to um, hopefully contribute to better uh, adequately funding those other programs. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Nichol. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, I know that uh, Councillor Austin knows what we I brought this up as a means of trying to sort of figure out where we could find some money. Like if we, you know, it's not at the beginning of our term. So, you know, having had a vision to support a lot of the projects going forward, but I like I touched upon yesterday and I want to repeat, you know, uh, when we had the whole discussion about participatory budgeting, we saw a trend going and it was sort of like we looked and I realized that operationally because of the former cities, a lot of things were taken care of. The former county, not so much. And that's where a lot of district capital went. So I can understand why some councillors would be sort of adverse to this at this time. That being said, many of the projects I supported were municipal projects that needed sort of an enhancement, whether it would be a playground, whether it would be an actor transportation project, i.e. bridges and things like that. So it's nice of us to sort of, you know, to say we want to give back 750,000, but when the supplementary report comes back, I would like to see and have council's decision to say where that is going, that it just doesn't go into something that um, you kind of decide where we want, where it needs to be, because I think in looking at the active transportation budget and the, how it's reduced, I would like to see it sort of be allocated to something like that as opposed to just sort of into um, general revenue. Okay. 
I think that would have to be a motion of council at the time to direct it. Uh, otherwise, it would just go back, I assume, Jane. Yes, it would, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. So we can decide that at the time when the supplementary report comes back. Thank right. you. Right. Thank you, Councilor Mancini. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I support the motion. I do have some concerns, however, and that's I support the motion for a supplementary report. You know, and I hear Councillor Hensby, and there is a difference between the urban area and the rural areas, and that is concerning. Uh, for me, you know, I've got uh, some projects that are starting up this year that I've been saving for, and so I have questions about those funds we put aside. And Jay mentioned that we'll come back and report and how that worked work out. So do support the uh, supplementary report to come back. However, I do have some concerns and some questions, and I, I am concerned about the, some of our rural councillors. Thank you. Um, Councillor Stretch. Thank you very much, Your Worship. And uh, I want to apologize. If you see my head going back and forth, uh, I'm actually uh, tuning into a separate uh, Zoom meeting at, at the same time we're having this discussion. And it's very timely. Uh, you know, we're talking about uh, underserved communities throughout the municipality as it relates to uh, broadband. And if I understand this motion correctly, and I appreciate, uh, you know, we're, we're in a tough spot here and we're making some tough decisions, but uh, this will, uh, uh, in a great way, uh, create uh, hardships for a lot of uh, people in uh, some of our smaller uh, rural uh, and underserved communities. You know, you're going through this list of capital projects that we may want to do. We may want to do that millions of dollars here and there. I'm getting requests every day for three or four hundred dollars for community groups that, that aren't included in any projects that we have on the books, whether they're going to be delayed or not delayed. So if this motion, and I want to understand it clearly, is to further reduce the uh, reductions that staff have uh, uh, you know, suggested for our district capital funds, then uh, no, I will not be supporting that and I will not even be supporting it going to uh, uh, to report. So am I understanding that correctly, that that's really what you're asking for is to cut our district uh, funds even further than what's being suggested, Your Worship? The uh, motion, the, the budget recast proposed to capital 750,000. Well, yeah. Councillor Cleary's motion is to eliminate 750000 So we would get uh, less to spend in some of these smaller communities if that was to uh, go forward. Correct. No, I can't support that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You wouldn't get less this year, but it would be it would not be a deferral. It would be a, an outright reduction. Uh, Councillor yeah. Zarowski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, I agree with my uh, uh, colleagues, Councillor Stretch and uh, Councillor Hensby, so many of the groups that uh, are funded by this fall between the cracks and it's um, they have no other source of revenue and th this is an important source of revenue and if you're looking at um, the social aspects of it, much of it of, of what I put out for my communities are those particularly marginalized communities who have no other options. And that includes the, uh, the black community in, in my district, that includes um, uh, folks who, uh, like, uh, groups like the Legion looking at, uh, in all corners to facilitate things for the benefit of, uh, of our constituents in, in areas where they're marginalized. So. No, I won't agree to this. This is precisely um, uh, what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to, uh, this money is efficient. It, it, it goes directly to those groups, various uh, shelters, um, depending on the counselor. Uh, but no, I, I can't support this. I, I don't even want to study on it. Uh, I, we need the money. I need the money in order to keep those groups going and supported, and I won't support this. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Cleary, did you want to close on this or? Nope, all good, uh, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Yeah. Did I miss anybody? Yes, I'd like to speak, Mr. Mayor. Bill. Councillor Carson, I see your name there, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I, I was looking for the chat uh, room and or couldn't find it. So 
uh, I'm going to support it. Um, you know, uh, the, the thing when we talk in terms of uh, the community groups, obviously we, we want to continue to support everything that we can. Uh, but that, that, that's not just limited to the community groups. Folks, this is, we're, we're cutting money because we just don't have the revenue coming in. So we got to be cognizant of that. This is, this is not, well, should we do this or that? Everybody's going to feel pain through COVID. You know, and, and I spoke to this when we first started this process uh, that, uh, you know, this is a crisis. People are going to understand that. And, and to the community groups that's being discussed here now, uh, certainly, uh, I, I feel their pain as we move forward, but uh, we have to remember that this is capital money. This isn't something to, uh, to do part of their programming or, or deliverables. This is for capital, for things that are new. And, and surely to goodness, uh, if, if we can chip in and cut back on, on what we uh, would have normally available for new things, I'm, I'm for that. Uh, the the answer to this, I, I keep uh, bringing up, uh, you know, and, and I'm not going to belabor it, but uh, we need to keep our focus on the big picture, and that is getting the federal government and provincial governments to work together to backstop some of these losses. I repeat again that uh, nationally, municipalities are, are facing 10 to $15 billion worth of losses. And, uh, you know, again, I repeat, this is a crisis. We need to cut wherever we can. And that's why I said early on, I, I just wish for the, for the short term, we could come as close to staff's recommendations as possible uh, and, and, and live in the hope that we can get out of this by, uh, by some revenue from uh, other orders of government. Thank you. Uh, I will be supporting the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Zarowski. Thank you, and, and, and thank you for the debate colleagues on this. Uh, I just wanted to point out quickly, um, the reason that I am not supporting this is that the groups that are financed through my capital expenditures are those who are already feeling more pain than any other groups. And uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, we have some serious issues regarding certain trailer parks. And these are folks at the very bottom of the social list. And we have to go to legal aid. And so some of my money goes in, uh, into legal aid to support the computers and the uh, various infrastructure that they need to provide the services for those who are feeling pain on every level, way above all the other areas. And I, I want to be careful to differentiate that. And I say it with all respect. I understand that we have to cut things, but the, the money that I use for capital projects are to those who have nothing else and have given till they bleed and have no other resources. And, and that's why I'm not supporting it. And I appreciate what, what Councillor Carson has to say, and I appreciate the opposite side of the fence, but that I, I just wanted to use that example to explain, and I hope we can get support. Thank you. Okay. You ready for the question, colleagues? Sure. Councillor Stretch. Against the motion. Councillor Hensby. Negatory. Councillor Karsten. For the motion. Councillor Nickel. Painfully, yes. <laughs> Councillor Austin. In favor. Councillor Mancini. For the motion. Councillor Mason. No Councillor Mason. For, for the motion. Councillor Smith. For the motion. Councillor Clary. Yes. Councillor Walker. Against. Councillor Adams. Against. Councillor Zorowski. 
against the motion. Councillor Whitman. Against the motion. Deputy Mayor Deputy Blackburn. Mayor. Voting no on the motion. Councillor Russell. For the motion. Councillor Outhit. Voting yes. And Mayor Savage. Yes. The 10? 10, 7. The motion uh, passes. Um, to go back to the list, the names that I have, it's, it's confusing folks because we have motions, but I have Mason, Nickel, and Smith on the list, the general list of anybody else is trying to get on, uh, signal to me on the chat line. Councillor Mason, and then we'll have second goes. Councillor Mason. One second. There, is that one? Oh, you're gone again. There, is that working now? It is now. Yep. And one of the problems is that it's so delayed that you just keep tapping at it. So it goes on and off and on and off 10 seconds after you click it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, these are great problems to have. Great problems to have. Uh, so, uh, OK, back to the notes uh, from 20 minutes ago. Uh, I guess uh, one of the first things I want to say more as a statement than anything is, uh, you know, some clarity from staff around uh, the Cogswell delay would 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 help, right? I mean, the fact that that wasn't happening this year anyway is something that we should own to the public, and and perhaps why I'll leave it to the CAO to to decide how we're going to format that, and I think council does need an update on where we're at with uh, with the the remaining transactions that need to take take place for this to happen. Uh, we did tell the public that we'd be in the ground this year early, and and uh, now we're talking about doing it next year. So uh, I, I think we need to uh, to have some clarity around that. But Cogswell wasn't going to happen anyway, though. Having that as a cash flow, uh, you know, I know we had kind of thought maybe we could include that in, you know, just run that out of uh, uh, reserves and pay for it out of cash flow. But, but you know, the original plan going back to the acoustics presentation was always that that would be out of debt. So, so to to me, if the project could go ahead, we should go ahead with it. But I don't think it can. So, some clarity there would be good. Spring Garden Road. I just want some confirmation. We are still doing the. Uh, there's still 1.8 or 2.2 million in there. I think that means we're still doing what we had always planned, which was the uh, Dresden Birmingham one way pairs and the uh, new lights on Queen Street and that we had always planned to do the actual streetscaping next year. So I think that's that's fine. That's more a recognition of where we're really at and and uh, on that project as and, and we told people that um, I am concerned about uh, the $315 million in capital not being doable like you know, uh, there's a bit of an implication there. Like, is there a bottleneck? Do we not have enough staff to deliver that? And is the proposed hiring freeze going to exacerbate that? The examples that uh, always come to mind are uh, the AAA bike network that we have funding for, and it's only 27 cents dollars from us every year that slides to the right, every year that slides to the right. And uh, I'm of a mind at the next council meeting or, or after this main motion goes to ask for a staff report that outlines What's the plan to actually get it done in three years? Because there's always delays and uh, we should understand as a council why we can't get this done and delivered, right? And is it gonna hit the timeline that has been, uh, that we've been telling the public and that we promised our federal funding partners. Uh, but I wanna drill down into a bit of a pattern which I've seen in the seven years that I've been here. Uh, I guess, I'm OK with delaying station two if the the union is and, and, and the members are really OK with those delays. Uh, the reason, you know, I had a tour of station two. I'm going to say this. This goes out to Councillor Adams. I had a tour of station two about six months ago, nine months ago now. And uh, it's closest I've ever been to literally losing my mind on this job was when I saw that the ceiling in the second floor ready room for the firefighters was still leaking four years after the first time I toured the facility, five years after, still leaking, whole ceiling gone, giant plastic tarps taped up, black mold had been in there and had been removed. That was the level of care in that facility that we expected people to live in, do 24 hour shifts in. So 
you know, I, I I would like to say I could I could posture and say I pushed hard to get the renovations done. But the fact is, when I talked to John McPherson, they were already all in flight and they'd finally gotten it together to do it. But I want to know that that facility is livable because the conditions that it was in, it, to, to me, it was unacceptable. And, and you know, to go beyond that, when I look at that le list, I know Ragged Lake's being pushed out. Uh, and then that's for good reasons, but that means Burnside, which we've identified for the entire time I've been here, needs to be replaced, is being pushed out farther. And Mac Depot is now on the on the deferred list. And what I'm seeing, what I'm worried about, is that the back rooms, the where the blue collar working support folks work, are not a priority. They they keep sliding farther and farther out. Uh, I, you know, like I don't want to see us, uh, you know, I want to see all of our staff working in nice offices. Alderney needs to be renovated. We own that building and it's a shame what has happened to it. Uh, and, uh, and, and I, you know, I support all of the things we talked about with corporate accommodation, but I have a deep concern that the less visible stuff you know, uh, the Mac Depot is something that that it's an embarrassment. I had a tour. I, some of the councils heard me say this before. I had a tour of uh, uh, Montreal, Saint uh, Saint Laurent. Mayor uh, gave me a tour of their facility that was only ten years old. It's like a different planet when you go into a brand new purpose built facility designed to maintain the kind of equipment and deliver the kind of services we do now. It's a different world, and uh, you, you can't even see, you can't even imagine how much better that would be for morale and for productivity for our staff. So, uh, you know, I'm flagging that as a concern that that these are important investments that we've been delaying making for for a decade or more that I don't want to see them keep sliding off the list. I would like to see them given due, due concern. So uh, Station 2, Ragged Lake, uh, what are the impacts on Burnside? Station 2 is, are they really like, I don't want to get emails from from uh, the union saying anything different about Station 2 and what's our plan for Mac Depot? Those are kind of my final questions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, uh, let's start with Cogswell. That was the first thing you raised. Uh, Jacques, uh, update on Cogswell. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I will uh, ask Brad Anguish to weigh in on that one. On Cogswell. Okay. It's for okay. Jane, probably. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, in terms of Cogswell, uh, Councillor Mason had it pretty much on the money. There are. Uh, I became involved as executive leader of the project a couple months back. Uh, did a full risk analysis. Uh, there are several risks that were there at the time. Uh, the land risks at this point are considered, or I would suggest you were over the hump. Uh, in terms of uh, design, there is uh, one lingering concern, major lingering concern around the design uh, in terms of exceptions from standards. We're working through that actively with the team. Uh, in terms of district energy, you probably uh, got the news as well as everybody else. Halifax Water has got to go ahead to do what they need would do with district energy. That was a piece we needed to have ready for the project. And uh, then we have the undergrounding with NSPI and that piece I'm working through actively. So essentially what we're trying to do is get ready to get a report to council that literally will clear the way for council to give us the green light to proceed to, con to construction. There will likely be a couple of uh, risks at that point. I'll go through those with council at the time, uh, but we are getting, you know, I hate to keep saying it, we're getting incredibly close to being ready to go with a tender for construction. I can tell you the whole team is anxious to get on with it. So I can also tell you the economic benefit of this job is steep. We're talking about 40 jobs created just in the uh, planning and tendering phase alone with 300 jobs being created during the course of the project. So, of course, the project itself. So uh, that's the Cogswell update. I don't know if you needed any more on that. OK, thank you. Uh, other questions that were in there? Spring Garden, Dresden Row, Birmingham. Is that still happening this year? Um, I can I can take that uh, question if you'd like, Mr. Mayor. Peter Duncan. Uh, yes, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, our intention this year would be to complete the final design of Spring Garden and also move ahead with the uh, intersection work. Uh, there's a tender we're trying to push out uh, for uh, the intersection work at the intersections of uh, Dresden and Sackville Streets. 
So and the one way pair piece too, or would that wait till the next year? Um, I'm not uh, entirely sure. I believe it'll happen with the sig signals. Our intention would uh, at, at least do the conversion to one way before we start the work, whether or not it'll happen this year uh, may depend on what the back, back to work program looks like. Okay, next Good question is AAA bike network. Yeah, the uh, AAA bike network, uh, as shown in the plan, uh, it remains uh, basically fully funded. Um, the deferral is the fact is cash flow deferral is really representative of the fact that we intend to tender all the work by the end of the year with construction happen, happening the following year. In terms of resources, yes, we are concerned uh, about having enough resources. Uh, we this this. Uh, the AT staff were impacted by the hiring freeze. However, um, we are working through that now to do an assessment of what the downstream concerns look like. Uh, I'll just correct the one point about the funding. The funding is actually 17 cent dollars, not 27 cents, um, which just drives the point home further. Uh, and in terms of, uh, we're working very closely with the provincial and federal governments who have shown no concern at this point over at the time frame for our projects so we're keeping a close eye on and keeping close contact with the, uh, with the other levels of government. We have no reason to believe whatsoever that our funding is at risk. In terms of timing, look, it's, it's very difficult to implement uh, a AAA bike network into a city that is a treed city, that is a uh, snow ridden city, um, and then with all of the other elements we have, which is uh, very dense, congested areas with a lot of considerations for homeowners and businesses alike. So the work is a tough slog. The team's working through it. Resources, like I say, are, uh, are I'll say, an amber light for us, and we'll be working with the TAO on that going forward. And obviously, we'll not let this project uh, fall into uh, any significant uh, delay. Thank you. I, I feel like I heard a piece in there about uh, uh, value, values that we need to unpack later, Brad, but uh, you know, IMP's already said pedestrians and bikes are over cars and all that, so uh, I feel like Council's been pretty articulate on that. My last question was about MAC and MAC Depot Station 2 and uh, all that stuff. Like, are, are, I, I guess the big question is, is MAC Depot do we think the feds and province would come in with that? That's been moved to deferred, so that you know, that's a big concern for me, the quality of the work environment for those staff. So I'll speak to uh, Mac Depot as well. The delay on Mac Depot is a result of the uh, users, i.e. TPW and parks. Um, we had finalized the scope of work with the facility construction team. Uh, upon the uh, most recent discussions with the provincial government upon uh, uh, transfer of assets, I'll leave it at that, um, the recognition was that uh, the scope of the building was likely too small to make sure that it's got a good forward future, uh, and, you know, so it didn't make sense to go forward with a building that was too small. We should build it, uh, we should build it with future expansion in mind. So that's, that's the only reason uh, there's a delay. Um, and so that's on Mac and, and yes, the building is required. We've been waiting over a decade for the building, but again, this was a slight de design delay uh, and that's what the cash flow represents here to get the building right. I just want to come back on the, the AAA bike network. Uh, certainly the IMP, I just want to, uh, you know, staff was very clear that IMP uh, has been significantly prioritized in the capital budget and remains so as a result of the past budget. So thank you. Okay. So thank you. Right. Your worship. Can I have ten, 10 seconds, Mr. Mayor, and I won't come back is uh, despite all of my hard questions and, and grillings, I actually support the capital budget as presented with the amendments have been made. I think that we do need to take this kind of cautious approach. It makes more sense to me to delay capital at this time than to lay off people. So I will support this part by continue to work to, uh, to toward the other motion I already made. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, it's Jerry here. If I could uh, <clears throat> just one more thing on, on Mac and uh, thank you, Brad, for for uh, uh, describing uh, the uh, the pause on that and, and the cash flow. Just another thing that uh, impacted Mac was the uh, Windsor Street Exchange project. So we had to take a bit of a pause on that project because of uh, uh, the redesign of Windsor Street Exchange and and to uh, get assumptions on the um, the road network that would go into 
uh, the series uh, terminal there. So that created a bit of a pause on, on the design work as well. And uh, we uh, actually had to uh, reposition the building from, I think, its, uh, its original uh, spot. So that was just uh, an issue uh, that came up as well that uh, it's good information. Thank you. I don't know, John, if there's anything else to add on that. Uh, I'm going to let John speak, even though Councillor Mason is about 28 minutes over his time. Uh, John, did you have anything to add to that? Uh, Mr. Mayor, through you to the councillor, uh, no, those two factors sum it up. Um, staff are engaged in getting this out to tender this fall. Thank you. Um, councillor Nickel. Thank you. Well, 28 minutes for me as well. Thanks. Now, I just wanted to, you know, and thank Jacques when we started, like to put it in context, because this is just for this year, but many have discussed and where my mind has been. And I want to ask Jane if it's possible when this comes back to council, if we can understand what is shovel ready this year, you know, there's been now cogs. Well, that has changed because, you know, in the roads in AT, in the 73.5 million that, you know, and I'm pointing out Brad has the, had the biggest reduction because of Cogswell at 26.2. Now that's going to come back into play given where we are and given the much needed economic uh, shot in the arm for the municipality. So, but there's still 36.9. Uh, of a reduction in roads and AT and bridges. And I just wondered, you know, like in all the information I have before me, we're all trying to, you know, without a presentation, determine, you know, what is what is in that 36.9 left. And the reason um, I ask is, and I know Councillor Hensby would be very much wanting to know more information about Ross Road and that realignment. And I have a meeting actually later today with the, um, with the property owners wanting to discuss that. So I think council's going to need to know, like this is just for this year and you know what we're looking at, but I think we need to still see a timeline as to what projects will be coming you know down the, the pipe in two to three years i know that councillor mason you know mentioned that as to particularly three years so i just wanted to um ask brad with regards to the 36.9 million dollar reduction in his budget for roads and at and bridges and specifically under the road safety improvements there's eight hundred and seventy thousand dollars in there what is that particularly like I'll put my transportation uh, transportation standing committee um, hat on for a minute because you know a big you know concern of, of, of residents across the municipality is road safety now the day I mean we're in a pandemic people are to stay home but for some reason I get a dozen speeding complaints every day and everybody's happy to see, you know, uh, traffic calming put in place and things like that. So I just wanted to know exactly what that was. Also realizing my earlier point that um, when it came to, you know, the district capital being deferred, maybe that's an area where we could sort of allocate those funds because, you know, keeping everyone safe is where I think the priority needs to be. And, you know, and I noticed in the budget, you know that, that Brad has the the largest loss or the largest reduction. Business systems, I think, thirty six point six for that reduction is mostly the SAP, which I can understand that can wait for those upgrades. Building facilities at fifty seven point six million, and the vehicles and vessels at twenty three million. So those are the big items that are, are ticketed. And I and but when you own, you know, you have these very fine print list of capital projects is kind of hard to align like exactly what it is that we're reducing and i'm just mindful that at 73.5 brad um your budget is what people see the most like if they see they don't see that work happening that's what and and for the residents that contact me they do want to see savings and they have their you know some ideas and they've been sending that to me which i appreciate but again, you know, it, it has to be a balance at the end of the day. And you don't want to necessarily be investing a lot in things that people don't see as opposed to what people do see. So my question was basically what is in the 73 point or the 36.6 that million that's left after Cogswell in your roads and AT? What exactly is that? Is it mostly bridges? And if Ross Road can still be 
you know, sort of it's still there as a as a working project. And if the 870,000 for road safety is something that we could um, possibly put on the parking lot. Okay. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Councillor, for your question. Uh, I'll do my best to answer it. I, I think the, I'll just come at it from the top down because it's a broad subject. Essentially, everything that's direct delivered to a community uh, for construction, uh, road construction, has been held intact. Um, we've cash flowed a certain amount, uh, but that would be no different than any other year, roughly. Mm -hmm. You need a cross check. And, and as I said, we tender all year long. And so, therefore, inevitably, there are jobs that get tendered that aren't constructed till the following spring. And that's the right. way our budget rules work. There are also jobs that get tendered that are very large, like Forest Hills Parkway, that may not fully complete. And some of that work will complete next spring. So that, that inevitably happens. Um, so as far as direct delivery to communities, we have not really touched anything in this budget. Okay. Where we've uh, really taken the hit in these budgets is in, uh, I'll call it overhead, terrible term, but we have lost a few staff positions through the reduction. Uh, the hiring freeze drove the reduction of the capital positions that we would typically hire under these accounts. And that's worth us uh, as I explained last week, there's a million dollars cut from the state of good repair, and that affects a lot of the small jobs in the communities uh, that we typically do every year, but that's a million dollars of a four million dollar account. Um, in terms of the 870,000 that you're referencing in road safety, again, the same theme takes place. There's no direct cut. Um, one of the advantages we had in that account was we've been managing the contingency very well. So we reduced our uh, need for contingency spending altogether in that account. We did a lot of advanced purchasing. Uh, the team worked uh, together last year to uh, get a standing offer in place for our RFBs, rectangular re uh, rapid flashing beacons. Uh, again, we were able to advance purchase that, so we were able to let some of that money go. Um, and as I said, K and Young, there was an intersection upgrade scheduled there, but because of some conflicting timing with Halifax Water, we won't be able to move ahead with that. So. Bottom line is no direct delivery uh, issues. The budgets stay uh, basically intact. Um, obviously, with any year, as we go through the year and we understand better how the pace of everything is going, we will reach out to councillors and update them as to kind of how the progress of the project is going and whether we'll be able to, uh, like I say, the game plan right now is to tender everything. Uh, but as inevitably as that changes, um, we'll be letting councillors know. So. Long, short answer is everything that I think a counselor would be mostly concerned about is in play. That does give me some comfort level, and I and I know because it's just for this one year. But again, I you know it would be nice to mm -hmm. sort of have an understanding when this comes back as to exactly what's still in play because I think we're all sort of looking through that. Um, I don't know if Peter Duncan can sort of say something about the Ross Road realignment. Or Brad, if you want to, I think. If you get a quick answer. Yep. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I don't have a lot to say about Ross Road other than I'm in the same meeting you are, uh, Council <laughs> Councillor Nichol. Um, and uh, we're actively trying to purchase land so we can build the road, but the money's not <laughs> in the capital budget currently. Just to say that it's still active. Thank you, Peter. Okay. Thank you, Thank Council. You. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Everyone can hear me, I'm assuming. Good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Good. so most of my questions in concern have been addressed. So my, my first one was the district capital. So thank you, Councillor Cleary. And you know, I understand, you know, I have a lot of community groups who benefit from that as well. And you know, for for me, if whatever the comes out of the staff report, being able to give them an answer if we have less money than we had before. Um, that means that that you can still try to spread the money, um, but not as much as they they usually get. Uh, so you know, I I support it reluctantly, um, but understand that you know we need to to make those cuts so that that's been addressed. The Cogswell, I was wondering on an update on that. So thank you, Councillor Mason, and also Winter Exchange, which was brought uh, up by Jerry. 
So the only question really that I have left now is is just one a, a direct, directly related to the district is Needham. There is uh, a reduction in that, and would that be related to the bathrooms for Fort Needham, uh, the master plan? Mr. Mayor Denise Schofield, that's correct, Councillor. The project was tendered and the and the price came in higher than what was um, allocated. So rather than um, we would we would need additional funding. It is one of the projects that we would hope to be uh, able to be considered on the shovel ready list. But uh, if not, it has been reduced recommended to be reduced because uh, of the cost. OK. Um, yeah, other than that, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Mm. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, I just uh, wanted to quickly touch on uh, one of the things that I think it was Brad said earlier, uh, talking about supply issues. And I'm wondering, what are you hearing about supply issues and and how do you feel this is going to impact your ability to proceed with uh, many of the capital projects that we are looking at uh, this year? That's that's a great question, Council. Thank you. Uh, other than supply being almost um, by personnel for a second, the, the largest uh, issue we've had is aluminum coming out of Quebec in the form of uh, light poles. And um, but we are working through that. Um, there's typically a long lead times, almost five months, and we've had some problems with the supplier. However, uh, we've also had some help with a, uh, uh, I'll just say a, a, an ad. Yes, a business advocate from Quebec who's also helping to expedite our orders. So at this point, um, again, we don't, uh, we are not aware of a supply issue that would stop a project right now. Uh, as we become aware of that, we'll let you know. Uh, the only other uh, issue would be force majeure if that was declared on a contract. Likewise, on, on our road contracts, we have not had that declared by any of our uh, uh, service providers, for which we're very grateful, and the tender prices remain very uh, competitive. So in all most respects, our uh, the road business uh, is, is moving forward very well. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. I think Councillor Austin, um, did you want to go again? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the uh, last one, um, Councillor Cleary, uh, other one, other pieces have been covered off that I had on my list. The last one, and it's uh, just stemming from the conversation we had the other day about our corporate accommodations. Uh, just trying to find it. Basically, um, I think we, I, I would like it to add uh, the reductions in the parking lot for that. Um, I expect we'll get in the report back why we can't remove the entire thing. Um, but I think there's room to remove some of it. I'm just trying to find, I've lost my uh, report uh, that was otherwise in front of me. Um, it's the line for corporate accommodations that's approximately three some odd million, uh, 3.6, and then the 200 some odd thousand for Alderney, that's right below it, are the ones that I'm interested in putting in the parking lot as reductions, and then staff can give us an explanation as to why or why not we shouldn't do that as part of the formal thing that comes back. Is a, it's a, there sounds like there's an awful lot of moving pieces there, so I'd like to actually see something uh, detailing it out. So Where is that motion? I'll second that. Uh, Twelve it's lines down on the first page. Yeah, about line fourteen and fifteen, first page. Okay. And from the sounds of what Jane said, the entire three. 0.6 million is not going to be a, something that we can actually come out, but I think we it would be worthwhile to get a report back on it. So I'd like to put it on the parking lot and then we can adjust as needed when the report comes back. So Councillor Austin is looking at the 3.627 million and the 266,000 under corporate accommodations. Uh, yeah, and the oh, the Alderney 266 says, I understand one of the upper floors up above, I believe it's the Parks and Rec um, space. So uh, this is being Mr. Mayor Mancini. I think Councillor Russell seconded it uh, wait, wait. already. Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, so that would be a recapture of those funds, uh, Sam. Correct for this year. Yes. Um, although, like I said, I'm expecting that uh, in a report we'll have an explanation about parts of it that we really can't put off. Okay. 
Okay, so Councillor Austin is proposing those for the parking lot. Um, is there anybody that wants to speak to that way? Are you on that, Councillor Mason? No, sir. Uh, main motion, please. The one that you said you wouldn't speak to again, that one? Uh, <laughs> yes, sadly, that is correct. All right, just want to be clear. You have every right. Um, okay, You're a very funny so man, then, Mr. Mayor. Sorry? You're a freaking comedian, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> oh, I, I just have a memory um, from the first 28 minutes. So I'm going to, uh, if I don't see anybody else wishing to speak to this. Question then. Ready for the question, Cheryl? For the motion. Affirmative. Can't hear Cheryl barely, but yes. In favor. In favor. Councillor Mason. In favor. Councillor Smith. Yes. Councillor Cleary. Yes. Councillor Walker. For. Councillor Adams. For. Councillor Sarowski. For the motion. Councillor Whitman. In favor. Deputy yes. Mayor Blackburn. Voting yes on the motion. Councillor Russell. For the motion. Councillor Oating. Yes. And Mayor Savage. Affirmative. 16 in favor. Okay, that's uh, carried. Um, on the uh, Councillor Austin, I think that's good for now. If you want to come back, you can. Councillor uh, Mason, Councillor Mason. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was just in the middle of texting Councillor Adams. Did a motion actually come forward on station two? I don't think it did. No motion came forward, no. Well, I'd like to make a motion uh, to add uh, delaying station two to the uh, 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 until next year to the parking lot. Second, Councillor Cleary. Thank okay. you, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Cleary. Halfway down the first page, Councillor Mason, right? Yeah, 1.7 million, I think it is. I just received uh, an email from Brendan uh, Marr confirming that the members uh, uh, are, they fully support investing the money in staffing and deferring the work to station two. So while we can't target that, I do feel that, you know, if, if they're willing to do that and, and, and we know that we're going to be debating bringing uh, the uh, fire budget back uh, in line with full funding uh, and other staffing budgets, that that's an appropriate uh, deferral to make, especially given the chief's comments. So I ask our council support in uh, putting that in the parking lot. Okay. Any Councillor Adams? That, You're on mute. To, okay. Um. Yeah. <clears throat> um. The is it uh, would it be appropriate uh, or is it possible to use that funding to? Uh, help out with the uh, station 50, 56, 60, uh, station 11, and the Sheet Harbor plus the volunteer honorarium uh, as a good start because there may be another 100 or 200,000 necessary. But is it, uh, are we able to go from uh, to take capital to operating? Jane? Thank you, Councillor Russell. I saw you shake your head no. Um, so what what we will do, Councillor, is you know there's there's only one pot of money. So what we do is we look at um, all of the um, all of the areas of funding. So if uh, Station Two is being funded from capital from operating, we'll look at that. We'll shift that over. Um, 
So that's that's for this year. What you're going to see in the supplemental report that comes back on Councillor Mason's motion is what the four year impacts of of all of these uh, these uh, moves are. So in the short term, in the initial year, um, we can do that if that's the wish of council. Um, but there are impacts as there are to anything and, and we'll deal detail that for you. Um, I'd, I can't remember. I might have been Councillor Austin that said that it's, it's not a good idea to move uh, uh, capital into operating because operating costs continue to go on um, and that's just part of the analysis that that we do so uh, so we can look at at the mix of, of funding that's there. Thank you. Thank you Councillor Walker. Thank you Mr. Mayor and I guess my question is how much is left in that account? It's not the whole thing because we already heard earlier today about two hours ago that uh, most of it is spent. So can we get the exact amount? Uh, Mr. Mayor, through to Councillor, there is $1,708,000. This is um, stage two of a, of a much larger project that was carried out. Uh, so the work that would have been done initially on station two would have been a, a much larger project. And Mr. McPherson may have the actual numbers and cost of, of what the uh, the first phase of the project was. Uh, John? Yes, Mr. Mayor, through you to the councillor. Um, the work completed to date uh, has been um, replacement of the roof and improvements in the uh, exiting from the second floor, as well as some exterior repairs. Uh, there's 1.6 million left in the account approximately uh, for the final phase. Thank you. Okay. Ready for the question on the motion? Sure. Councillor Stretch. For the motion. Councillor Hensby. Okay. Councillor Karsten. <laughs> Councillor Nickel. Yes, for the parking lot. Councillor Austin. In favor. Councillor Mancini. Councillor Mancini. Yes. Yes, in favor Count of the motion. <laughs> Councillor Mason. For the motion. Councillor Smith. Yes. Councillor Cleary. Yes. Councillor Walker. For. Councillor Adams. For. Councillor Sarowski. For the motion. Councillor Whitman. Yes. Deputy Mayor Blackburn. Voting yes on the motion. Councillor Russell. For the motion. Councillor Outhit. Yes. Mayor Savage. Yes, so that motion is carried. Thank you, Councillor Mason. I see no other names. Uh, Jacques. The shovel ready list, would we be able to be, will we be looking at that tomorrow? Yes, it's our intention to circulate it to you um, probably late in the day today to try to get that in front of council and have that adjudicated on. So we'll circulate it and have that conversation with you tomorrow. So we have a council. We have committee the whole schedule tomorrow afternoon at uh, one o'clock. Is it Cheryl? One o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. That would be the main purpose of the meeting tomorrow, Jacques, if there's no other questions on uh, capital. Correct. And then we would resume our meetings. Uh, we have a council meeting next week and uh, other budget uh, committees as well, but we will get a list back, uh, the list, uh, Councillor Mason's motion back and other parking lot items, Jane, that we would be able to discuss next week. Yes, Mr. Mayor, the idea on the 26th would be to go through the reports. We would have the parking lot list and we would go through the, the process that we did uh, back in February. Okay. So I think that's it for today, colleagues, unless somebody has a question. 
I was going to end the meeting the way I began on Terry Fox and let everybody know that the commemorative sneakers, Adidas, have made those available to raise money entirely for the Terry Fox charities at $130. And I was going to suggest we all get them, but apparently they sold out in minutes, so they're all gone. Um, Councillor Hensby, I do think they have some of those short shorts left that uh, we used to wear <laughs> back in the 19... Uh, 80s. They have a pair of those sneakers in Lake Echo on display when they sold them 20 years ago. Yeah. Anyway, I was I was going to mention that earlier, but um, I could see where it was going to go, so I kept quiet. <laughs> Bring on the Adidas. Yeah, indeed. Terry Fox, keep them in your mind. If you need inspiration, you can do a lot worse than that. All right, colleagues, that's it for today. Thank you all. I want to thank Jane and Jacques again, and uh, Peter Duncan and John McPherson and. Bradley Anguish, anybody else who was uh, Chief Steubing, uh, thank you all very much. Uh, enjoy what looks to be a lovely day if you haven't got a full day of meetings like I do, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank Thanks, you. Steph. Thanks, colleagues.